Hello, my name is Jason McMaster, and I've been a musician my whole life. Hello, everybody. I'm Don Walter, and I've been playing music all my life. I guess I was born a musician. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hi, I am Carrie Clark, and I have been a musician for 31 years. <laughs> My name is Marcus Cardwell, and I'm a musician. Hi, my name is Bones, and I've been a musician for over half my life. And he's old. <laughs> That's four years. <laughs> Hi, my name is Don Robinson from the band MC Overlord. I've been a music artist for about 11 years, and um, this is what I'm about. Hey, what's going on? My name is Nathan, and I am an acoustic performer here in Austin, Texas. Hello, I'm Shandon Som, and uh, I've been a musician for, got a good 15 years now, and I enjoy it. Only thing I know how to do. Hi, my name is Steven Larson, and I have always been a musician. But over the last couple of years, I seem to have lost the passion I have always had for music. I decided to try and refocus myself by talking to some musicians that I respect and making a film about what makes a musician a musician. From 1996 to 98, I wrote, played, and recorded the best music I have ever done in my life. In an effort to take it to the next level in the business, I made up some demo packages and sent them out to 185 record labels, publishing companies, and agents all around the nation. Out of all of those, all I received in return was 35 letters politely turning me down. Some were form letters, some offered an invitation to send in my next demo, and some just made me feel like I was in the wrong business. My first musical memory is commercials. Like, yes, such as. there was this old commercial that was Pontiac, the mark of great cars. I was six years old, I think, and I was visiting my grandparents in Germany, and ABBA was just, like, huge in Europe. I think it was 1976, 75 or 76, and uh, my grandparents had a, this really huge old bathtub, the kind with the water heater oh. that you have to fill, like, with coal and light it up like you have a bath every Saturday whether you need it or not so Saturday bath time I was like six years old and uh, Fernando was the big hit and I was just like I remember sitting in the bathroom going there was something in the air that night yeah oh yeah when I was four or five years old before I ever started school uh, they had a group of gospel singers on the radio called uh, let's see what was it called I can't remember. Anyway, it's, they, they started off with, turn your radio on, turn your lights down low, and listen to the master's radio. I can't think of their names right now, but every day at dinner they'd come on, and Mom would set me in a big old chair, and I'd go to sleep uh, every day listening to that music. When I was a little kid, my dad used to, uh, when I was a baby, in fact, my dad used to put me on, uh, on the table after dinner every day and uh, or every evening and um, sing One Tin Soldier to me on his acoustic guitar. <laughs> Watching a, a musical of all things. Uh, it was in my, uh, God, man, I think I was in the second grade. And the people, my mom worked for a doctor. And the doctor took his family out to this, like, outdoor opera 
type of thing and it was it was it was weird for me except for the fact that I was intrigued by people on a stage and just putting themselves out there like that. I, you know, I wasn't really digging the whole <laughs> the whole genre of breaking in the song out of nowhere, you know, but. Uh, my uncle teaching me how to play. I must have been about five, six years old and everybody hanging out, coming from a musical family, playing uh, around uh, the Christmas tree. Man, kid, 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 uh, with everybody singing and dancing around. It was, yeah, cool, yeah. Probably, like uh, Jackson 5 45s, you know, and, and other various uh, 70s, you know, uh, late 60s, early 70s uh, AM radio, for, you know, hit singles, 45s. My dad's Doug Som, yes. and uh, so basically growing up in that environment, I was exposed to it real early, and it was always at Soap Creek and all these clubs, Roman, and uh, was exposed through that. Didn't really think about the musician thing because I was so young, you know, but uh, it was, I was definitely exposed to all that, and it uh, kind of opened up the doors before I kind of knew it later on. Uh, if it goes back so far, I don't know. Uh, I was always, as far back as I can remember, I've always wanted to sing, you know, and had to sing. Musicians are born that way, they just can't help themselves. <laughs> I mean, I was playing a scale by like the first day and like a song by the first week. I never really thought about it um, until my dad had a friend called J.R. Chatwell, and uh, he passed away in 83, but he was like a mentor to my dad, and uh, you know, he knew all about music, and I remember just getting on the drums one day, didn't know anything, really. I mean, just piece bad, blah, 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 but something to him goes, uh, Doug, I, I think that boy's gonna have there something one day, you know, and I, I remember just not knowing anything, maybe hitting the drum, maybe I hit it like where I knew that someday, you know, I don't know, but I wasn't doing anything to like feel, but he was like, that guy, I think he's got something for the drums. He's gonna be good one day and whatever, he's, you know, if he keeps it up. I've always played guitar, always, ever since I can, ever since I can remember. Um, started off playing in the church and had a steady gig every Sunday, you know, the little curly headed uh, uh, mariachi mass guitar player, you know, at the Spanish mariachi mass, well, that, that's what I did. So there has, I've been very fortunate all my life, there, there isn't a time that I don't remember at least being told that I had a gift. Well, I don't feel like I've ever really had to work at it, and maybe that could be what that question entails. I still don't have a gift for music. <laughs> I. I don't play an instrument. I, I'm musically retarded, and that's why I sing, <laughs> or at least try to. Um, I think I don't have a gift for music. I have a passion for music, and I think that's, you know, it's given so much to me that I need to put something back, even though it's like I really, I sing for a punk band, you know? I'm really not that uh, musically gifted whatsoever. I just, I'm in love with music. My parents just, viewed me and my sister taking piano or choir or whatever as like they wanted their kids to be well-rounded and I don't think that my family ever expected that I would become as obsessed with music as I did so it was kind of like they were real happy when I was just like oh yeah you know I'll take piano lessons and I got really excited it was choir was the thing that I stuck with and my mom was just like real happy oh yes that's so good for you and then when I hit like seventh and eighth grade it was like i want to be in a rock band <laughs> he could really make a beat with his mouth be like <laughs> you know and just do that and I, and, yeah, exactly you know and i would have to rap you know i could rap i mean back then in high school man i could rap off the top of my head i could just go man for like 40 minutes just just going and i talk about you and the tree and your mom's in the house and everything man it was wild so we started just doing it and it just felt good. I love the beat and I love being able to just flow. And uh, man, these crowds would just stop. People were just mesmerized by it. And, and 
man, it would get to be, I mean, we were making kids miss class, man. It would get to be like 60, 70 students, you know, clogged up in this lounge while we standing on the bench just going at just surrounded us. And, uh, man, it was like my first experience with being able to stop a crowd. Man, I had no idea that I had that capability.